Hello again, YouTube. It's Dave again with Clarksville Guns and Archery, coming to you with yet another video that hopefully will be a little more informative, um, this time instead of more entertainment purposes. If you remember a few months ago, we released a best guns, best carry guns of 2021. I think this is like a follow-up. Uh, we're gonna talk about some of the options that have been come out since then, um, some of the differences that some of the models have made, and just kind of go over something new that's come along that I'm not gonna say it changes the game, but it definitely makes you think a little bit. So if you remember last time we went over the big models, I'm not gonna go over all of them, but we're gonna talk about Glock, Springfield Armory, Sig Sauer, and Smith & Wesson. So let's start with, I guess the oldest one, then we'll go down the list. These have all been checked, that's why they're locked open. Uh, so before I pick these up, so no one freaks out. I'm gonna go pick up the Smith & Wesson here, talk about it. So this is the Shield Plus. Um, for some of you may know, the Shield has been around since 2012 and it was originally introduced as a single stack firearm that was capable of seven and eight round mags. Uh, this one has been widened a little bit. If I had a normal shield, I'd show you the difference, but I will show you the mag. Um, it does come with a 13 round magazine this time. So it's just a little bit slightly wider than the last one that came out. A little bit easier to hold on to. They also gave you a much better trigger this time. Uh, so this trigger is gonna be a little bit easier to pull, a little bit softer, things of that nature. Also, and we'll uh, give a little lineman here, babe. For shit. So, kind of give you an idea. We got my little handy dandy trigger pull gauge here. I put it right there, and that puts it about a five-pound trigger pull, give or take a little bit. So it's a, about five, five and a half pounds is about what most self-defense triggers are, so that's to be expected. Um, but the pull itself is not as mushy this time. It's not as stiff. It's a little more easier to pull. Uh, the next thing they gave us is they finally, a lot of these guns are starting to come MOS cut. So it's a module optic cut right there. Um, so it gives you the option of whether you want to run a red dot or not. So that's kind of neat by them. Um, we're going to put this down for a minute and I'll actually come back here in a second and then show you something neat with this. Next, we're going to go to probably the long, well, I'm not going to say the oldest, but the longest one doing this. We're going to talk about Glock. We're going to talk about the Glock 43X specifically. So this has been around for a very long time um, nowadays. Uh, to me, over a year is a long time, um, especially if it's kind of with, with sort of the test of time, so to speak. Um, now, thing about this you'll notice is if you've ever held a Glock 19 before, it feels just like a Glock 19 in the hand, just a little bit on the thin side. The one downer to this is that when these came out, Glock did release it along with a 10 round magazine. Keep in mind, they have not updated this. However, there's a wonderful little company called Shield that makes 15 round magazines and for a very quick design change on the magazine button, um, you can actually put the 15 rounds in it and it runs fine. Uh, when they first came out, they had some issues, but these things run well now. So with that little hiccup in mind, um, it's a very good gun to go with. A lot of people go with it. Um, some people have an issue with Glock. Uh, some people are myopic with brands. Um, I won't really touch on that, but just keep that in mind that just, I, I, we see this in the comments a lot, so I'm gonna bring it up. What I like and what you like are not necessarily what Jim and Joe like. So kind of keep that in mind when we talk about all this. Trigger pull on the Glock. They advertise a five and a half pound trigger. Let's find out about that. Eh, it's closer to a six pound. Now the one thing to know about trigger pulls when it comes to using any kind of gauge like this, um, just because a manufacturer says, oh, it's this poundage from a factory, that's a sample size of one. Um, metal is metal, and sometimes the springs come in a little bit heavier, a little bit lighter. So use the what they put on the packaging as, if it says 5.5 .5 pounds, assume it's gonna be between five to six somewhere. Let's talk about the XD, or the six hour next. Um, this is probably still, um, I said it last time, I'm gonna say it again, this is probably the most popular concealed carry piece on the market right now. This is of course the XL, so all that means is it's a slightly longer grip and a slightly longer barrel. So you're still getting a 12 round mag with this. Um, that kind of kicked the, the slightly bigger micro gun market off, uh, off its tails when this gun came out. It's a very comfortable grip. Um, I have fairly large hands and I can grip that very comfortably. 
Um, it does cut out a little bit down here, um, which is going to play in here in just a few minutes. And that's important because even though I have my magazine in, I can still get a good grip on this firearm. Now, let's go ahead and do this little quick pull since people seem to like this. So that's breaking at about a five pound trigger. So, so far, everything is roughly between five to six pounds. Keep that in mind. Finally, we're gonna talk about the newcomer. This one just came in a few days ago. It just got released on social media. I'm actually kind of surprised we have one. This is the new Hellcat Pro. This kind of took me by surprise when I pulled it out of the box a little bit ago. Um, I was expecting it to be not that, not that much different than the normal Hellcat. Um, I got to tell you, this is a very comfortable grip. So I'm going to put it in my hand. And as we can see, I don't know if you can tell, it actually comes down a little bit further from my hand. It kind of feels like a full-size gun. It's just thin. As with the normal Hellcat, um, they did give you a place for your red dot. The biggest thing, though, they went ahead and gave you 15 rounds from the factory. So as it stands, while these other firearms are capable of getting bigger magazines, Springfield so far is the only one that's giving you 15 rounds from the get-go. Um, so kind of keep that in mind. And before I start doing the back and forth with these, we're going to test this trigger real quick. And that's a little bit heavier than a six pound trigger. Try it, a little try it again. I'll try one more time. Again, just a little bit over a six pounder. Um, some of you might be wondering now, well, that's a heavy trigger pull. It is. Um, I don't think one pound really makes a difference. Some people do. If you're talking about competition guns, I certainly would agree that that does make a difference. When we're talking about a self-defense gun, between one or two pounds, probably not a big deal. Of course, your mileage is going to vary. Everyone's going to have a different opinion on that. Um, for the most part, though, trigger pull doesn't really matter too much in combat. Now, I said at the beginning of this video, I'm going to kind of show you guys something that's kind of neat to me. Um, so I'm going to line these all up, and then we're going to come back after I line them up and kind of show you what the differences are as far as height and length go. And now we're back from our hopefully commercial break. What I've done is I've lined these up as best I can, and of course this isn't to scale, to give you an idea about the height differences between these firearms. We have the SIG 365 XL on the end going to the Smith & Wesson Plus, the Glock 43X, the Springfield Hellcat Pro, and the Glock 48. And the Glock 48 is more of just a, to give you guys an idea of the size difference. That's why I didn't talk about it a few minutes ago. Everything I said about the Glock 43X is true with the 48. It's just a slightly longer trigger, or barrel rather. So, if you're looking from the front here, we have biggest barrel all the way down. Now, if you're looking at the Smith and the SIG, the Smith looks a little bit shorter. Um, I didn't do this by barrel length, I did it by height. So, we, it's the Smith and the Glock 43X are about the same barrel length, minus maybe 0.1 or 0.2 inches. Um, just kind of give you an idea. Most of us that carry inside the waistband, the length of the barrel doesn't necessarily mean much. What you're trying to hide is the grip of the firearm, which is why we pan out from the side first. Um, so if you remember what it looked like from the side, the SIG 365 XL is still going to be a little bit shorter to hide this firearm. Um, of course, we're going down the list here. Pretty much, oh, the rest of them are kind of sort of the same. They're all going to stick out about the same. Uh, the difference is, if you can kind of see in the back with the Glock here, my hand at any pointer, the way the grip comes back, that might be a little bit of an issue, uh, sticking up a little bit. Um, so that is something to consider if you're going to carry a firearm, that maybe that little bit down by the heel might make or break you. It might not. You know, it's again, it's going to be your call. So with this in mind, um, a lot of people come in and ask me, especially we've been talking about this today since I've had these all these guns out, which would I still go with? And my answer always varies. What am I trying to do with it? If I'm trying to hide it, and I, I just want to have the smallest footprint I can with these type of firearms. Remember, there are smaller firearms out there. 
we're not talking about those today. We're just talking about these that are big on the market right now. Out of all of them right now, I really feel the 365 XL still hides the best. Now, some of you are probably thinking, well, you can get more than 12 rounds, and you can. I'm going to show you something. I'm actually going to take this back because unfortunately I don't have a 15 round magazine to, to kind of show you, but I do have one for the normal 365. So that's with the 15 round magazine in it. It's going to be the same height. So if everyone just kind of watches what I do when I do this, all of a sudden, yeah, I'll put it on this side just to make it a little bit easier. The 15 rounder becomes a little bit longer and thus harder to hide. So now we're kind of going back to square one with this. If you want more than 12 rounds, the uh, Smith & Wesson Hellcat, or Smith & Wesson uh, Shield Plus, the Hellcat, and the Glock series might give you better bang for your buck if you're thinking about that. One thing I would like to point out to you, if you're worried about carrying it, not shooting it. If I need to reload, again, this is some John Wick stuff, but just bear with me, guys. I drop my magazine, I have a 15 rounder in my pocket, I can pull it out, by then no one's, I'm not worried about hiding it. To me, I still think the SIG is a better option for hiding it. I'm not talking about shooting it. Right, I'm not gonna get into that. That's, that's gonna be completely based on what you pick up and how you shoot. Um, but for just hiding it, I still think 365 is a better option. Your mileage is gonna vary. Body type is different, how you carry is different. Um, there's probably gonna be someone in the comments right now typing furiously about how I'm wrong and their, their Smith & Wesson bodyguard is the best gun ever. Guys, I appreciate you. Um, remember, keep it in context. Um, this is more to kind of give you an idea of what to expect should you start switching mags out and what to look for, etc. Um, if you ask a lot of people right now what the most comfortable grip is, it usually comes down between the SIG 365 and the Hellcat anyway. Um, not that the Glock is bad if you're used to a Glock, not that the Smith & Wesson is bad if you're used to the M&P series, but really the Hellcat and the, and the SIGs are kind of what we're seeing as far as people going, wow, that feels really good in my hand. Um, so just kind of some information to take, kind of take away from today. Um, again, just expounding on our previous video that we did a few months ago about where the micro series guns are now. Um, as you kind of notice, these are a little bit bigger than the last ones were, and we've been noticing that trend. Um, they're taking these smaller guns, making this a little bit bigger, and they're actually really not that much bigger if you really, really want to get down to the nitty gritty about it. But they're getting a little bit bigger now, and now the race seems to be how many rounds can we cram into a gun without making it too terribly big. So I think in the future we're going to see more of this. Um, perhaps we'll see a redesigned SIG. Maybe some new company is going to come along and blow us all away with how amazing they are. But if you found this video informative, which we hope you have, uh, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Come give us a visit if you're in town. And as always, stay safe, guys.